welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Hussy case uh, by me. This is the new pattern that I'm releasing as this video comes available. Um, so it's a design your own. It's a go on your own adventure kind of a pattern. So this one that I've done today, I was actually planning on using as a makeup case. So I have put some makeup in to show you. Um, so this is the size small. Um, you get options of two different types of slip pockets. You can add a zipper pocket. Um, the large one comes with a zipper pocket on the front as well. And then you've also got the option of a center fold part. So this one is for all of my sewing stuff. So I've put all of my needles in here. And then there's a zipper pocket on this side and a fabric pocket on that side. Um... The large size is big enough to fit a Nintendo Switch, and the smaller size is designed to fit a Nintendo 3DS, no, 3DS XL. Um, I originally designed this because my child got given one for his birthday. So, if you would like to see how to make one of these, please stay tuned. Right, so I am going to start with the zipper gusset. So I have got medium woven on all of the red pieces, which is my lining. And I've got my Violin 1050F, which I call Hefty, on all of the outside pieces. And my zipper tape is the same length as the gusset piece. So I'm going to put lining right sides up, zipper right sides up, and then sandwich the top right sides down. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And I'm just going to line it up as I go. Now you can also pin this or clip this. Just going to line it up like that. And stitch as I go. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to bring it around. I'm not going to cut off here because it's quicker. And then I'm going to fold back the top piece and crease it with my fingers just to make sure it's going to stay. And then I'm also going to pull back the under piece. Now, if you're not doing the binding style, only stitch the top. But because I am going to do binding, I'm going to stitch both together at the same time. So I'm just making sure I pull them both evenly out. And then I'm top stitching an eighth of an inch from the seam. And then we're going to back stitch. Trim off those tails. And so now that is one side done. So we're going to repeat this process on the other side. So I'm going to line it up. And now I want my cherries to be going the same way. So I want them like this. So this will be the outside. So I'm going to flip it down like that to make sure that the pattern goes in the same direction. What you can even do is add one or two clips if you're concerned, and then just peel it back to make sure that it's looking the way you want. Just lining up everything and I'm sewing it in sections. Now obviously you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. Back stitch and then again I'm going to pull both of those sides out. And then I'm going to top stitch to hold it in place. Now if at any point this is getting too difficult um, and you're worried about these, you can actually base them along the edges as well. So I'm just making sure I'm pulling that bottom tight to come out and match up at the top. And back stitch just to lock it in. And then trim off your tails or loops if you did it what I did. So now we've got our gusset. So I'm going to be using two zippers. So I'm going to crack one end about, about two inches. 
and then I put the zipper on about halfway and I pinch it in place. Then I'm going to grab the other side and push it through and then wrap it around my finger and wiggle until the zipper goes on like so. Then I'm going to go to the other side and put the other one on. Now you don't have to have two zips if you don't want to. You can just have the one. I like two on this. And make sure they're even. And then wiggle and pull. And you want to pull your zipper pulls together to make sure that there's no bulging. So that's sitting perfectly lovely. There's no like a bulge out here. So we're all good there. Now I'm going to take my gusset back pieces. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to be clipping this this time. So I'm going to put right sides together with the lining. Like that. And then I want to make sure that the cherries are going to go the right way. So I'm going to flip it over. Clip that in there. The first side's the easiest. It's always the second side that's tricky with this bit. And now I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And seal off that end. Then I'm going to pull both sides back and I'm going to top stitch. So the top stitching is one eighth of an inch from the seam. Because that's what I do all my top stitching. Alright, so now I'm going to bring right sides together here and clip it. And this next bit is the tricky part. So we're going to take this. And basically what we want to do is make sure that it's going all the way around without having any twists and then adding it into the clips. That's why we're using clips because it's going to fight you a little bit. So now that we've got that, it looks like a big mess, but I promise it does work out. So now we're going to stitch and back stitch. Stitch over everything and back stitch again. And then before we top stitch, I'm going to trim off those tails and then we're going to pull it to make sure that it does in fact sit flat like that. Uh, if you manage to accidentally twist it, you can just unpick it and then redo it. And then top stitch the other side so that they're both the same. Now if you're worried that this is going to cause you drama, you can actually base the two edges together all the way around. But I'm not worried. But I am going to zip that open. Then I'm going to find the centre at the back. Make a small notch on both sides. Like so. And then opposite that, so now that we've got that there, if you pull it out opposite, pinch it, and then same with this. Do you want to find the center? We're going to need this later when we join it. So now I'm going to join those two nips together. And what we should end up with is the side part here. So again, we're just going to take a small nick out of all the sides. And I'm doing this now while it's in my hand. You can do it when we get to it later, if you would prefer. So now I've got four nick marks on both halves of the gusset, and that can now sit aside. I'm now going to move on to, I have chosen, which you would have seen at the start, but I'm saying it anyway, I have chosen a fabric slip pocket because I wanted a little bit of this fabric on the inside to be a nice accent. So I didn't put any interfacing on this because it's a quilting cotton. It'll I don't want it too thick as a pocket because this is quite a small case. So I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm just going to top stitch along the top edge. And that will just hold it nicely. 
So that's actually just the slip pocket done because it's already in half. If I wanted to, I could have added a seam allowance and cut two pieces so that the back side is not upside down, but that's okay. So now we're just gonna line it up on one of our lining pieces and I'm gonna baste it in place because it's easy to work with when it's one solid piece. So I'm just making sure I'm well within the seam allowance. So that is one side done. If you wanted to, you could also add a zipper pocket just above this. Um, but I don't need a zipper pocket. I'm turning this into a makeup case. So that's one side done. You could also have done a mesh pocket where you just use um, some, what's it called, vinyl to seal the edge. But I just, I really wanted that on the inside to kind of tie it all together. So now we've got our four straps. So because I'm using this as a makeup case, these straps are going to hold down all of my like eyeshadow palettes. So that's what we're doing here. So what I want to do is I actually want to fold it in half to find where halfway is. And then we just need a little bit of Velcro. So this isn't a sew on Velcro, there's no sticky on this. Um, the sticky they use on Velcro tends to not enjoy being um, stitched and it's not good for your machine to stitch through a sticky velcro so I'm just going to cut four little one inch pieces you can do a little bit more if you want to oh no two one two sorry not four two and then separate them all And so now I want to find halfway and you can either just hold it in place or you can use some double-sided tape. The double-sided tape is 50-50 on Velcro. Sometimes it wants to stick and sometimes it doesn't want to play ball. But I'm going to attempt it and if not you can use Wonder Clips to hold it in place. Alright, so I'm just going to... Oh, there you go. It's going to work this time. Excellent. So I'm holding it in half because I want the Velcro to sit right on the end. So like that. So I'm just going to stick it in place and then I'm going to open it to stitch the half like this line here. So this top edge will be, when we top stitch around the whole thing, we'll catch that top edge. But I don't want to see these stitch lines on the outside. I'm going to open it out and stitch over it. Like so. Then I can, if I want to, more double-sided tape. And again, you don't have to use the tape. You can use clips. You could just hold it in place with your fingers. Fold it at the end and it should stick together nicely. And then I'm just going to top stitch around the three edges. We don't need to worry about the open end because that will be hidden. Needle down and pivot across the end, back down like that and back stitch. So that's one done. Now I'm just going to repeat the process with all the other pieces. Right. You just want to kind of rub, really rub the double sided tape to make sure it doesn't slip off because tape sometimes see like that. Like I said, sometimes it wants to stick and sometimes it really doesn't. So again, I'm going to fold it in half, making sure I take care to line up that edge so that it will be even. And then stick it in place. 
can actually do all of them. I can chain stitch them. So now that I've showed you one, I will chain stitch the other three. Line it up at the end, grab a piece and stick it down. Now I'm not worried about creasing there, obviously, because it's going to stay like that permanently later. And by creasing it, it also helps it to sit still while you place your Velcro on. So there we go. Now I want to stitch all of the ends. And the reason I'm not back stitching is because I think it's going to take up too much. Um, it's going to look too bulky. So I just do three stitches and then go back into the first hole, stitch across to the end, and then go back through the last three holes. And this creates a minimal amount of stitch bulk. And then you can just trim the single stitch between them all, flip them all over, and more double sided tape. So it doesn't need to be the whole half, it just needs to be enough that's going to hold it in place for you. They're not terribly long, so it's not a super big problem. Peel off all of the backings and throw them in your bin. Try and be neat as you're working. It might be annoying to you, but it's more annoying that after you finish sewing, you then have to go and clean everything. Whereas if you clean as you go, it's much easier to pack up. Okay, so that's those. So now I'm going to start at the end and I'm going to put the Velcro side down um, so that I get a nice top stitch on the outside. Not that it really matters. Alright, next one. Just pop it straight in after the other one. Go nice and slow when you're on the vinyl, especially the hook side, which is the rough side, as if you go too fast, you will just shred your thread. I think I'm going to run out of bobbin thread soon. So now I'm just going to trim this little bit here. There's like the skinniest amount sticking out and I don't want it there. You should also cut these with a rotary cutter. See it's like the most minimal amount but it will make a difference and look neater. You can also edge coat these edges if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to today. So. We're going to take our piece and we're going to fold it in half and find the center, top and bottom, because we have to do this later anyway and it's going to be easier before we attach everything. And then I'm going to fold those together and I'm going to find the sides. And that's going to help when we put our gusset in. So now we've got these little nicks everywhere. So I want to make sure that the rough side will be placed up like this when I'm attaching them. You also want to grab a ruler and make sure that they are evenly spaced. And then I'm going to use some wonder clips to just hold them in place like this. Now you can spread them out however you like. 
Um, I'm putting these ones a little bit closer together rather than further apart because my makeup palettes are actually only quite small, which is why I've decided to make the small size. So now you don't actually need to line up the other one as much. You just kind of lay it on top like this and clip it in place as well. So this is a fairly quick pattern depending on what you're trying to do with it. Okay, so the two clips means it's not going to um, move around while I'm trying to stitch it, which would be nice. And then I'm just going to stitch straight across there and I can continue over. If you find that easier than um, unpicking it and moving, just go across. Just make sure you're within the seam allowance. And then I can do the same to the other side. Like so. And so that is now. They don't stick together because you've got to remember I've made it so that there's something actually under there to grab. Otherwise, what's the point of them? Instead of these as well, I did think about it after I wrote the pattern. You could also put some elastic so that you could just lift the elastic and slot things in. So that's the all the pieces done now. So I'm just going to go and take my outside pieces and my lining pieces and I'm going to line up a piece of foam in the middle and then iron all three layers together so it becomes one piece with foam in between everything. And then I will be right back. Alrighty, so that is all ironed. Now because this particular print here is um, non-directional, I didn't have to worry about which way I put the back on. But I did think consciously about the top. So obviously the zipper will end here. So this will be the closing and this piece will have the fabric part. So when you lift the lid up, you can see that I've got it so that the slip pocket is going to be facing upwards. Now, obviously you don't have to do that. Maybe you're going to use it sideways, in which case your print would be different. But that's just something to think about if you're doing um, fabric on the inside. So they are now ironed. You can see there is foam in between. So that's now one piece. If um, you think at any stage you're going to struggle, actually go around and base this together. Um, it is going to help you. So first thing I want to do is turn this inside out. And I'm going to start with the back because I don't know. I just like to start there. So the back is here. And I also want to make sure that the pattern's going to go up the right way. So this is the right way up. So that's going to sit on there like that. Um, so we should have the center of everything. I didn't find the center of this one, uh, but the other one definitely has it. So you're just you're going to need the center and the side centers as well because they correspond to the holes we put before. This case looks complicated, but I promise it's really not that difficult. And the binding's really not that scary. And I'm going to be using um, a fabric binding today so that you can see how I do it without the other stuff. So I'm just going to sit this here how I want it. So back over there and then just pop that on top and that's the way I want it to go. So now I'm going to flip this all the way over and put right sides together like this and add some clips just to hold it in place. And then I really need to twist this around like that so that the right sides are together um, and the lining is going to be where all of my stitches are going to be seen for now. So I'm going to line up that center part there. I'm going to do three clips, I think. Then I'm going to come to this side one and line up the sides together. And you probably want to zip the zipper all the way uh, because it makes it easier to maneuver if it's more open. So I'm just going to take the side here. And again with some clips, I'm going to clip it all down. It may not look like it fits, but I promise it does. 
if you've done the right seam allowance. If you did the wrong seam allowance, you might have a little bit more trouble. So like that. And then I'm going to tuck this down. And I'm basically just pushing on that corner until the edges line up like so. And for the most part, it should all just kind of mingle together like that. So I want to get some more clips. So you're going to want lots of clips on this. So as you can see, we're now starting to get it to hold in place. So we're going to stitch this and then we put some binding on. And then we'll do the other side. So it doesn't matter really if you start with the top or the bottom. Second clip like that. And then I'm just going to tuck that in. And there should be a little bit of kind of folding right at the edge, but that is normal. It just should be smooth where the stitches are going to go. And then last corner. I might put one more clip there. And one more clip there. And then push the last bit of the corner in. Now I also could add piping to this. You can go as crazy as you want, really. I could have done a more plain fabric and done embroidery on the top. Um, like I did for the one on the pattern. Right, so I've now got a lot of clips, but it's all holding in place. So now, still within the seam allowance, I actually just want to join all of these together to make it one piece. So I'm doing about about three eighths of an inch. I'm not going to the full half an inch. There's also a tail there that I missed. Okay. So now that you've stitched it, you just want to kind of check that everything looks good underneath like this and I've got one little tuck see that there we don't want that so I'm actually going to unstitch it and fix it because this is the top and because it's not a difficult fix so I'm only going to kind of um, unpick about an inch I just want to do a couple of extra stitches each side of the problem so that I can take care of it it does happen sometimes if I clip incorrectly. These are really small stitches today. Just going to do a couple more. Let's make sure I can smooth it out. I actually might smooth it out into the corner. So I'll unpick the stitches the other way. Okay, so I've pulled it out so that now when I'm holding it, there's no pinch. And so now I just need to readjust everything so it doesn't pinch when I stitch it a second time. Add some clips like that, and then I'm just going to do that curve one more time. Much better. Okay. So I'm just going to clip off a little bit of this so that it's going to sit nicer. When we put the binding on. So not a lot, but just a little bit of the excess at the edges. Alright, binding. 
I have actually just cut two lengths of the um, lining fabric so it's not going to be as obvious that it's in there because it all blends together. So I'm going to start at the back like this and I'm actually just going to fold it over and pin it in place or clip it in place. Gusset side up as always um, and because this is this is a poly cotton, so it actually shouldn't be too difficult to stitch on. And I'm not adding too much bulk to the whole thing. So this will just cover all of the raw edges. And the reason I'm using this today is because I really did want it to match. The one I made for my child, he wanted crazy colours. So the bindings bright blue whereas the rest of the fabrics not bright blue so it is quite obvious that it's there this will help it blend in more so all i've done is i've taken a two inch piece of fabric and folded both sides into the center i have what's called a bias binding or bias tape maker where you thread the fabric into it and then iron it and follow and it will iron it all for you If you want to as well, because I'm putting it on the fold like this, you can actually iron it a second time in half to create a good solid fold and then it just slots on much easier. And being the fabric, it also makes it a lot thinner, so it'll be easier to stitch on a domestic machine. Few more. And then I'm gonna I'm just gonna hold it and go slightly past the first clip and then cut off this excess. And you wanna go past the first clip and I'll show you why. So now when I'm coming around this corner. Still binding everything but I'm going to tuck under the raw edge and then add it into the other clip so I've now hidden the starting point or the finishing point and there's no raw edges in this because this is not um, polyester binding you can't just melt it so I've actually tucked it in so you'll still see the join but there's just no raw edges there which makes it much easier to deal with. So now that the binding's on, I always like to start either just on the edge of or just after the binding to make sure it's gonna hold in place. So I'm gonna stitch and back stitch to lock it in. And then I'm just going to stitch the binding on. Now I'm stitching about an eighth of an inch from the folded edge of the binding to make sure that I'm catching the underneath as well. You don't want to be right right on the edge because then you've got a good chance that you'll miss bits underneath. So I'm just pulling them off as I go. Oh, and I've just run out of bobbin thread. Right, let me do another bobbin and I'll come right back. But you can see, see how it's, there's no raw edges now. Really, really pretty. All right, let me do another bobbin. I'll be right back. The bobbin is in and ready. So I'm gonna go back to where I run out of bobbin, which is here, and I'm actually gonna go back about three stitches and start stitching here. So what that's gonna do is it will lock in the old stitches because obviously there was no back stitching on them, and then I can continue stitching the binding on. Now, if you need to, you could have put your clips back on. Um, but apparently mine wanted to stay put, which is nice. And then back stitch when you get back to the start. So now that I've done that, I'm going to trim off the tails. And then also over here where we had to go over stuff. And then you want to flip it over 
and just make sure that you've caught everything on the other side as well. So that is one and done. All right, so now this is the bottom. So we're going to do the other side in exactly the same fashion. I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to lay it down the way I want it. So that will be the bottom. And so that will go on that way. I'm going to line up the back center again with my clips facing the gusset part. And this is why we have it open. See, it's much easier to deal with. And then we're going to go to the top here and add in some clips. Like that. That one's about to break. I just heard that. My clips are starting to get a bit old. I think it's nearly time for some new ones. I've had eight break this week. Or nine. Eight, nine. I don't know. A lot. So I'm just clipping all the center parts together. Again, I've got the gusset facing up. And that's where I'm putting my clips so that they face me. So now it looks like this. So now all I need to do is tuck in the, oh, okay. All right, new bobbin is in and ready. So I'm going to go back to where I ran out of bobbin, which is here. And I'm actually going to go back about three stitches and start stitching here. So what that's going to do is it will lock in the old stitches because obviously there was no back stitching on them. And then I can continue stitching the binding on. Now, if you need to, you could have put your clips back on. Um, but apparently mine wanted to stay put, which is nice. And then back stitch when you get back to the start. So now that I've done that, I'm going to trim off the tails. And then also over here where we had to go over stuff. And then you want to flip it over and just make sure that you've caught everything on the other side as well. So that is one and done. All right, so now this is the bottom. So we're going to do the other side in exactly the same fashion. So I'm going to take the main panel and I'm going to line up the back. So I want to sit it on the table how I want it to actually end up being. So I want that at the base. So I want... I want the back there. So I'm going to put right sides together like this. And line up that centre back. And then add some clips. Now we need to make sure that your clips are facing the gusset because it's easy to pull them off as we're going if you do it that way. Then I'm going to come to the side. You can also do the opposite. You can move around however you want. Just make sure that all your centers are matched up. Put another clip there and then I'm just going to hold the gusset with my finger and kind of tuck the main panel in. Like so. Then I can come to the front part. Like this. And move towards the other corner. So again, I'm going to pinch the gusset and then use this finger to just kind of push it so that it lines up. And everything else should pretty much fall into place. There should be a little bit of rippling um, because we are pushing it into a smaller space because they're curves. Like that. And then we've just got oh, one more on this side. So grab some more clips, always facing the gusset. So do two clips there. I'm going to come and do another clip along this edge here. And then again, I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to use this finger and just push it into the corner. And it does most of the work for you. So you don't have to worry too much about the wrinkles. Because it naturally plays them where they want to sit. 
So again, we need more clips along this longer edge before we do the corner. And I want at least one more clip there. So now we've just got this last little corner. So I'm going to pinch it, and then I'm going to use my middle finger to kind of grab the corner and push it at the corner. I say kind of because that one didn't work. Clips, lots and lots of clips. You also want to try and um, not have any pinches seen. So sometimes you will have to manoeuvre, especially on the last corner. And you may also need more clips. But it's now clipped on and you can look from the outside to see that it's lovely before you start stitching. Make sure that it's all in its right spot. So now, again, I'm going to push down. And I'm going to do this just within the seam allowance so that these stitches aren't seen later. I don't really, it's almost like basting, but not. So I didn't backstitch because I'm going to go all the way around. You can backstitch if you want to. It is a good habit to have. And every handful of clips, I'm going to stop and readjust. Now this side will be a little bit more difficult because you've got the top bit, but basically you can just kind of fold it up and out of the way, like so. Put all the clips away. It's nice to have a clean area. Even though we are going to need the clips again in a minute, it's not really the point of right now. And then when you get back to the start, you can do a little back stitch. I'm going to trim off some of the bulk in the corners. like so and then throw all that in the bin because we like to keep a tidy space we're going to do the same again so this is a second piece of binding you can also just buy it continuous you don't need to have separate bits for this and then i'm going to wrap it on and over and in as in half as you can get it and that way it will be lovely and even when we stitch it. Again, you still want your clips facing the gusset piece. And we're just going to slowly, I'm kind of tugging on it with my fingers here, but not too tight. I'm not like stretching it, but I'm also making sure that it's not loose and saggy between each of the clips because that also wouldn't work out. You'd have lots of um, pinches in it. So I'm pulling it firm but not stretching it if that makes sense. And just slowly working my way around. And this is the last stitch. Once we've stitched this, your case is done. Unless of course you were adding the middle section. Um, I was going to, but my makeup brushes will not fit in this kit, only the actual makeup. So that's why I haven't done the middle piece in this particular bag. I'm going to do a separate bag to hold all of the brushes. That, and I don't think they'd fit in here. But if you had like short brushes or travel brushes, then you'd be fine. Now, this side is going to be a little bit more bulky, so you do need to keep that in mind when you're stitching and just slow down when you get to all of the vinyl parts. And again, if you're worried about the bulk, you can do elastic instead of the Velcro straps. Whoops. I did catch it. A couple more clip, probably not that many. That was an overkill, but that's okay. So now that I'm back to that clip, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to trim off the excess bit that I don't need. And then I'm going to tuck under the raw edge 
and it's going to clip over the top of the original one. And then you can just add a few clips in there and voila. So it's now all clipped in place. So again, we're going to squish it down flat with the gusset facing up. And we're going to come in right here. So again, you can backstitch or not here. And then we're going to go nice and slowly because of the bulk. We're not in a hurry. And again, you want to get about an eighth of an inch from your stitching. Uh, from the edge of the binding, sorry. You want your stitching to be about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the binding. And that just helps to ensure that it's catching underneath as well. Straight bits are always quicker. And always try and get a matching thread colour for your binding. It makes it much less obvious if you start veering off to the side or something. And black is always the best uh, and most forgiving colour when it comes to binding. It will hide most, if not all, of any errors that you create. And then backstitch. I'm going to pull it out and trim off the tails. And then I'm going to check the other side to make sure that I caught everything. If there was a little bit that I missed, you just come over with the missed side facing up and just stitch it. But I managed to avoid that today. So now you just turn the bag out the right way. Now you just want to push the binding all the way in. It's obviously not a very big turn through, as you can see. But the case is now done. And the binding is nice and subtle in the case like that. And then you can just zip it up. This will still need kind of pinching around the edges to make sure that it's sitting flat because it looks a little bit more oval than it is. Um, but that's just a matter of kind of poking out all the corners properly. But that is your case. All done. And then you can use double zips and open it out and it will basically sit flat for you. So depending on which way you want to use it, everything will fit. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope this is a fun little project. Please let me know what you plan on using yours for. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>